The point of this video, or maybe this is a video series, I don't know yet, isn't to show that RxJS is easy to learn. It is actually pretty hard to learn. But once you do learn how to use it properly, it is like unlocking superpowers that makes a lot of things way easier to accomplish. So take this as an example. This is an application from my Ionic Start course that I'll be releasing soon. And the general idea is that it is an application that allows you to take one photo per day, and then you can play those in reverse order in a quick little slideshow. So I've done a video about this application before talking about on push change detection and someone in that video made this comment. So I'm already using RxJS operators to achieve the functionality we are looking at now, but with some minor modifications and the addition of just one more RxJS operator, I can achieve the functionality that the commenter suggested. So I've just quickly switched to the end result now so we can see what that looks like before we talk about it. So if I just click play on this slideshow now, it's going to play as normal, but if I tap and hold, it is going to pause on whatever photo that we're currently looking at. And then as soon as I release that, it is going to start playing again. So it's the same general idea of something like Instagram stories or whatever they're called, reels, I'm not sure. But when you tap on it, it sort of lets you pause that stream to view what you want to look at. And then it's just going to continue as normal. Okay, so let's look at how to do this. First, we are going to quickly recap the original code and then we'll look at the addition to create that Instagram effect. So the basic idea here is that we have this slideshow component that will accept an array of photos as an input. It is then going to next those photos onto this current photos behavior subject. And so this is going to be a stream of whatever our current array of photos are. But what I actually want to do is display just one photo at a time in the template. So to do that, I create a separate stream called current photo. Now, an important thing to keep in mind here is that our original current photo stream emits all of the photos in one single emission as an array. So what I want to do instead is create a new stream that emits just one photo from that array at a time. So to make that clearer, this is just going to have one emission that's an array. It will have all the photos in it. What I want this to do is to emit one single photo at a time over several stream emissions. But this still doesn't work entirely for us because each photo emitted from this stream is going to be emitted immediately after the previous photo. So if we have three photos, they are all going to be blasted out all at once. We'll go one, two, three, and then we're just straight on to the last photo. So if we want to display a slideshow, we need a delay between each of those emissions. So the problem is that there isn't an operator for adding a delay between each emission from the stream. And there is only an operator for adding a delay to the beginning of the stream. So what we're doing is we take that array of photos that we initially get from our current photo stream. We transform that into a stream that emits one of those photos at a time. And then in our concat map here, what we do is we create a separate stream for each one of those photos. So one photo at a time is being passed to this concat map. We create a stream of that photo and we delay that stream by 500 milliseconds. So if we have three photos, we are going to have three streams that each emit one photo and each of those streams is going to be delayed by some amount of time. So since we are using a concat map, it is going to wait for each of these streams to complete, including the delay that we specify before subscribing to the next one. So the end result is that we have a stream called current photo that will change to a new photo every three seconds. Now I totally get that this is hard and confusing if you don't have a strong understanding of RxJS. And even if you do, it's not something you can just sort of look at and instantly get. You need to think through it a little bit, or at least I do. And this is a particularly tricky example, I think, in terms of wrapping your head around it, because it might not be immediately clear why we're taking an array of photos and converting it to a stream of photos and then converting that stream of photos into multiple streams of individual photos. Uh, that can all get pretty confusing. But once you do have a solid understanding of how RxJS and its operators work, this code is quite a clean and simple way to achieve what we want. Now let's take this a step further. We want to add the ability to pause whatever the current photo is by holding down on the screen. So to achieve this, we create a new behavior subject called paused. 
And in our template on mouse down, we are going to emit true on that stream and on mouse up, we are going to emit false. So now we have this state information of whether the stream should be paused or not. Then all we need to do is swap out the delay operator with the delay when operator. So this allows us to provide a delay based on some other observable emitting rather than a hard coded time value. So before we just had a delay of one second, but now we have a delay of whenever this observable emits. So basically this is going to be delayed indefinitely until we emit a value from this second stream that we are using. So what we're doing here is we're supplying this delay when with our paused stream. So that's how we're getting the information as to whether it's paused or not. And we're using switch map to pull that value out of that stream. Now, if the stream is paused, we return this stream. And if it's not paused, we return this stream. Now, remember this delay will end whenever this returned stream emits a value of some kind. So if it's paused, we just return a delay with a very high value. So for all intents and purposes, it's not going to emit. But if we are not paused, then we just return a stream with the normal amount of delay. So ideally this would be an infinite amount of time. I don't actually know if there is a cleaner way to achieve this rather than just providing a very high value. Uh, so let me know in the comments if you know of a better way, but this works reasonably well, as long as nobody wants to pause this for more than a hundred seconds, but we could always make this higher. So again, this is all reasonably complicated if you don't have a strong understanding of RxJS, but if you do invest time in gaining that knowledge, it pays off big time. The behavior we are implementing here is quite complex and we achieve all of it with about 10 lines of actual code. And on top of that, this reactive style of code is probably also going to lead to less unexpected bugs and errors due to race conditions and other things. So I guess that's my opinion of RxJS in general. It's hard and then it is way easier. There are just so many operators that you can use. And once you do have a solid understanding of enough of them, you can use them in such different creative ways that you can deal with almost any situation you need to just with the default operators. All right, that's it for this video. Uh, if you liked the video and would like to see more, please feel free to hit that like and subscribe button before you go. I hope your day flows as beautifully as this photo stream and I will catch you in the next video.